In our third example, we're going to look and see how special relativity, when things move really fast, have an effect on time. So now we're talking about relativistic time. And the situation here is we have a space, space rocket traveling very fast at 0.995 c, 99.5% of the speed of light. That is our moving reference frame. And on our moving reference frame, we have a clock. And we have an observer on that moving reference frame. We'll call it observer B, moving along with the clock. And observer B measures a time elapsed on that clock of one second. We have another observer, observer A, who's stationary, like say on the Earth, watching the space rocket go by, looks at the very same clock, how much time has elapsed for this person when only one second has elapsed for this person. How do we figure that out? And again, the equation we're going to use is time as observed by observer A is equal to T sub naught as observed by observer B, who is stationary, in regards to the clock that we're measuring. So since B is stationary with regards to the clock that we're measuring, even though B is moving on the moving reference frame, B sees T sub zero as the time, and T is the time that's being seen by observer A, even though observer A is stationary in reference to the Earth, but observer A is moving in a way in relationship to the clock, because the clock is moving in relationship to observer A. And so t equals t sub naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v square over c square. And again, since gamma is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v square over c square, then we can say that t is equal to gamma times t sub naught. And so all we have to do is figure out what gamma is based upon the velocity of the moving event. All right, plugging those numbers in, we get this is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.995c quantity squared divided by c squared. And you can see that this c squared comes out with this c squared. And so we end up with this is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.995 squared. Then uh, what do we have? So 0.995, we square that. We subtract that from 1. Then we take the square root. Then we take the inverse, so gamma equals 10.0. Then we plug that in here, and we can say that the time as observed by A is equal to gamma, which is 10.0, times 1 second, which is the time observed by observer B. And so the time observed by observer A is 10.0 seconds, which is kind of remarkable when you think of that. So when one second elapses for the person here in the spaceship, 10 seconds elapse for the person left behind on the Earth. So if the person goes on a one year long trip as measured by the person in the spaceship, 10 years will have elapsed for the person left on Earth. But in other words, if this person takes off, comes back after a year, this person will be one year older, everybody else left on the Earth will be 10 years older. And that's actually what would happen if we could ever get a spaceship to travel that fast for a year. And that's how you do that problem.